start. So, so till now, what we have done, we have looked at how relative price is determined. How relative price in the Jamison writing phone, okay, don't write in so. How the relative price is determined. So in Kono's economy, okay, of pre-trade situation over Turkey, okay, what we see in pre-trade, when we are looking at home country, okay, we can look in two way, okay, the relative price of cheese must be equal to opportunity cost of producing cheese in home country, then the home country will be producing both goods, right? Yes or no? And this come out to be 0 0.66 if you remember. Okay? Or you can look at the other way that we have done yesterday. The native price of wine must be equal to opportunity cost of producing wine. This is AW over ANC. This is I think 1.5. Okay? So how much will be producing both goods? Okay? So this is the Thing that we will be getting when we have pre-trade situation in home country. Similarly, in foreign country, okay, what we will be seeing, okay, generative price of seeds, PC star over PW star, must be equal to ANC star over AW star. It is 0.5. Okay, so generative price of cheese in the foreign country must be equal to opportunity cost production cheese, which is 0.5. Or we can see the reciprocal of this one. P W star over P C star equal to uh, A W star over A C star equal to two. Okay. So in three trade situation, in home country both goods will be produced, and in foreign country both goods will be produced. Okay. Now, when trade takes place, we have derived the native supply. Curve. Right. Here we have taken, we have we are looking from home country perspective. So what is terms of trade? Price of export over price of import. So home country has comparative advantage in the production of wine. So we are taking price of wine over price of cheese. This is relative price of wine in terms of cheese. Okay. Here we are taking relative supply of wine. Okay. The quantity of wine in home country plus quantity of wine in foreign country divided by quantity of cheese in home country plus quantity of cheese in foreign country. Okay? Now, you know that pre-trade situation, what is the price prevailing in home country? Relative price of wine, 1.5. So let me just write A and W over A and C, which is 1.5. Okay? Below this price, if price, relative price of wine is below this, no production of wine will take place. Okay? So wine production will be zero. If you take any price, this is price prevailing in the home. Okay. If you take any price, we know this price, say 1.5, say you take 1.4. No white production will take place in the world. Okay. This is the graph that you get, the part of the graph. Okay. You can get step function. Then when price is equal to this one, you will be getting this flat portion of the supply curve. Okay. Then you get the reason we are both going to be specialized. Okay. Then we will be having this part. A and W star over A and C star. This is two if you see it here. Okay. If your terms of trade, okay, with this two, foreign country will be indifferent between producing both goods, so you have finite supply curve. Okay. If the terms of trade is above this, say P W over P C hat, whatever you want to put it, okay. If we have above this, both country will be specialized in the production of part. So you supply curve become infinity. So this is the derivation of relative supply that we have done. And here, in this age, home country will be specialized. The home country will be specialized only producing wine. So we will be getting N over AW. Foreign country will be specialized in the production of cheese. Home will produce zero unit of cheese. So this will be total. Cheese production will be N star over ANC star. Okay. So this is the derivation that we have done. Today I have done in salt. Okay. Now, how equilibrium price, relative price that means, or terms of trade determine, okay. We have taken relative demand curve, which is downward sloping due to substitution effect. 
at point 1 ok this is the terms of trade that it determined say pw over pc hat and i have taken this to be specific 1.75 okay this is 2 you can remember and this is uh, 1.5 okay so equilibrium terms of trade or relative price okay is determined in between the pre trade price in everyone when trade take place equilibrium price will be determined in between the pre trade price so this is the opportunity cost of producing cheese in home country or oh, sorry opportunity cost of producing wine in home country okay must be less than this is 1.5 okay less than terms of trade or the equilibrium price that is determined say pw over pc hat okay and this must be less than the opportunity cost of producing wine in the foreign country and w star over nc star Okay, so equilibrium relative price is determined in between the price of both countries. This is what this is 1.5, this is 1.75, this is 2. This we are looking from home country perspective. Okay, suppose we want to look from foreign country perspective. Okay, what foreign country is exporting? Anyone remember? Foreign country is exporting cheese, right? Yeah, foreign country is exporting cheese. Okay, so net reverse it. Okay, and look it from the foreign country perspective. Okay, let me use other pen. This is from home country perspective. Okay, now when I uh, reciprocal this, it will be A N C over A N W. What you can get? Zero point six six. You can look at it. Zero point six six. Zero point six six. Sign will change when I raise token. Sign will change. This is 1.75. So 1 over 1.75. Yesterday I have taken out. It is 0.57. Okay. Sign will change greater than. And this is you know how much? Two. Uh, sorry. 0 0.5. 0.5. A W. Sorry. 0.5. Okay. Yeah, let's see profit N C by N W star. Okay. When we raise token it, N C star over N W star is 0 0.5. Okay. So net it write it properly. So the foreign country, I will write here. This is N C star over N W star must be less than 0 0.57, must be less than 0 0.66. Okay. So here terms of trade, okay, now between the price of foreign country and home country when we are looking from foreign country perspective. When we are looking from home country perspective, it is same in line between the terms of trade of home country and foreign country. Okay. So 10 marks also you have to write in this way. You have to analyze this and put it in this way. Okay. Can you everyone? Okay. I take the picture, I will send this one. Adam Smith theory. When one country is efficient in the production of own goods and other country is inefficient in the production of own goods, then trade between both countries will not take place, right? Okay. Then I am asking the question, under what condition competitive cost advantage theory will be not found? Condition will be the opportunity cost of producing cheese must be same in both countries. Similarly, the opportunity cost of producing wine must be same in both countries. Under this condition, competitive cost advantage fail to determine pattern of trade. Okay? Take one example. So, we have taken home and foreign cheese and wine. Okay? Let me write 4, 6. Two, three. Take out the opportunity cost. What you will be getting? Opportunity cost of cheese in terms of wine, and opportunity cost of wine in terms of cheese for home and for it. What you can get here? Yes. Yes. What? 
zero point six six. This will be one point five. This will be zero point six six. This being one point five. Okay. Now tell me uh, how trade will take place between home and foreign. Is it possible to have trade between both countries? No. Why? Because this is the confusion part that uh, student not able to conclude. Okay. Why? Because opportunity cost of producing cheese is same in both countries. Okay. Similarly, opportunity cost of producing wine is same in both countries. Okay. So when opportunity cost remains same in both countries, okay. Comparative cost advantage theory fails to explain pattern of trade. Okay. Did everyone? This is a mode theory. I have provided one notes. Okay, you no need to write it. A detailed notes is there. Today I have uploaded already. So you can go and, and go through it. Okay, criticism, conclusion, and generalization of the cutting theory. Okay, you can have a read. Criticism. Okay. So first criticism is that it has considered only one factor of production, neighbor, right? But there are other factor of production also, say capital. Okay. It has not considered other factor of production. Okay, why determining cost? It is saying that there is only one factor of production. Never. Second criticism is that never is homogeneous. Okay, but never is not homogeneous. It is heterogeneous. Okay, the quality of never differ. And one of the assumption that we have taken that never is used in fixed proportion. Okay, when we are saying that never is used in fixed proportion. We are not considering other factor of production. If you remember, if we consider two factor of production, say capital and labor, and this is isocon, we can use different combination of labor to produce same output, right? Yes or no? Hmm? Okay. And one of the assumption we have taken is that factor of production is mobile within the country. Okay. It cannot go to other country, but it is within mobile within the country. But this is not the case due to geographical location. People generally don't move. Okay. And second thing is that uh, specialization that is required for wine production differ from specialization that is required for cheese production. So you need to reskin the worker also. It is not that worker can freely move from one sector to another. If 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 wage in wine sector increases, it is not that all the worker that are working in cheese sector suddenly come in the wine sector and they start to produce the same. They need to re-skill it. Okay, learn uh, how to make cheese. Okay, that aspect is not considered here. Okay, that is the problem that we have in this theory. Okay, next uh, we have taken two by two by uh, two by two by one model. Two country producing two goods, but in reality we know that there are more than two countries. There are more than two uh, goods. Okay, so whether this theory been found for n country and n goods? Okay. That is the case. We have to do uh, empirical studies, okay, and then generalization notes that I provided, okay. But it is observed that uh, when we look at large number of country and large number of goods, okay, we find big comparative advantage. All country must be producing one goods, okay, but there are some big comparative advantage thing that we are going to get, okay. This is the subject that we have to do empirical study, and there most of the author have found that there will be big comparative advantage. Next, uh, we have considered no transportation cost. Is it possible to have no transportation cost? In reality, no. It is not possible. Yeah, it is not possible to have no transportation cost. Okay, transportation cost may have significant role. Okay, in determining whether I am going to import that goods or not. Okay, then there is free trade. On the model in this unit that we are doing is free trade. Free trade means there is no government protection. Government is not putting any tariff or quota. Okay, so what is happening? Okay, goods can freely move from one country to another. But this is not the case. Government is putting protection in the form of tariff or quota. Okay, so you will not see that there is a free movement of goods. But in the competitive cost advantage, they have considered that goods can move from one country to another freely. Okay. Clear on this thing? Yes, no. 
Okay. Next, if you remember one of the assumptions that I have given, the taste and preference is same. Okay. The relative demand curve that I am drawing, that means uh, this I have taken what relative supply of Y Q W plus Q W star over Q C plus Q C star K W by T C. Okay. That means home and foreign country. Okay. Taste and preference is same. Okay. But it may happen that both country can be on different income level. Okay. Take the case of India and USA. Does our taste and preference is similar to USA? Yes or no? No, it is not similar, right? So country can differ. So your relative demand curve will not be there. Okay, both country will be having different relative demand curve. Okay, India will be having relative demand curve different. India may not be uh, having cheese and wine as their favorite favorite food. We will be having maybe wheat, rice. Okay, on that kind. Okay. So taste and preference differ. Okay, here we have taken that taste and preference remain the same. Okay, by doing so, what we are doing? We are only considering supply side. Okay, we are only focusing on the supply side of output. Both both. We are neglecting the demand side. Okay. Yes. No. In here. Okay. The last one. Okay. Here, what we are saying that when both country been trade, when both country been trade with each other, they been gain. Okay. But how this gain can be distributed, we don't know. Look at this one. We know that country will gain in the classical framework. Everything in the Adam Smith theory, Ricardo theory, Hertzian theory. Okay, country will gain. Okay, coming to the Ricardo model. Okay, this you have. Okay, this is your relative supply. This area, this this thickness. Okay, this vertical line. Okay, where will be this taking thickness? Okay. How this gain will be distributed? Both country specializing in this range, right? Yes or no? Whether the terms of trade will be this one or this one or this one, or it will be this one. How this gain of trade will be distributed? We don't know. Okay. So how this gain will be distributed is not known. Okay? Can you remember? When two country trade, okay, both country will gain. But how this gain is distributed is neglected in this theory. Okay, so this is the criticism that we have in the Ricardian theory. Okay, despite on this weakness, okay, what we see is that Ricardo theory is still valid today. Okay, and there is a refinement in some study, uh, some example they have taken two countries, uh, uh, several goods. Okay, and they have taken several countries and several goods, and they are able to find out that there exists some kind of competitive advantage. Uh, for some country in some goods and for the country in other goods okay that case study has been done in the in the in the brugman book also where they have taken two countries and and four five goods okay so one country have competitive advantage in two three goods other country have competitive advantage in other goods okay and in the generalization case i already talk about that we have big competitive advantage okay one such refinement we are going to do Uh, or look at is the hexa onion theory in the next lecture. Hexa onion theory or model model. Okay. So onion is the student of hexa. Okay. That has reworked his uh, model and make it more popular. Okay. So here we are going to consider two by two by two economy. Okay. Two country home and foreign producing two goods say x and y. Using two factor production, labor and capital. Okay, yeah, capital and labor. And here technology remains same for the production of goods X. Okay, technology in home country and foreign remains same. What is the reason that we have competitive advantage arising? Okay, or trade arising between two countries in the Ricardo model? It is differences in productivity of labor. Why difference in productivity of labor arises due to differences in technology? Here they say that let keep the technology same. Okay. So in order to produce good X, technology is same in home country and same in foreign country. In order to produce good Y, technology is same in both country. Okay. What thing differ is the factor endowment. Okay. Factor endowment differ. So in the next lecture, we are going to look at one of the refinement of the competitive cost theory, that is Hertzian theorem. So I end this lecture here. This complete about Ricardo theory of trade. Okay.